what we're looking at is state of the art for 1987. So we're going to replace it with this, Holly's Terminator X fuel injection system. The Terminator X system is a new product from Holly, and it's a complete plug-and-play fuel injection system for 1987 to 93 Mustangs. Now, there's three things that I really like about this fuel injection system. First, it tunes itself while you're driving using the wideband oxygen sensor. Secondly, it has a bracket that's included to mount the PCM under the passenger seat to keep it out of the heat of the engine compartment. And third, you can reuse your factory TFI distributor and also your factory pulse width modulated idle air control motor. After draining about a gallon of coolant, we removed the upper intake manifold, which gave us access to the engine control harnesses underneath. Here's the crusty old injector harness. These salt and pepper shaker connectors, there's no telling how many gremlins are hiding inside this. Also, this is all crusty and beat up from years of use and the connectors are broken. Since we won't be reusing any of this stuff, I can remove it with extreme prejudice. While I would love to throw this whole harness in the garbage, there are some things in the harness that I need, like the airbag sensors, and for some reason, they're tied together with things that I don't need, like the mass air connector. So I'm just gonna have to separate the wires and everything that I need from the stuff that I don't need by peeling apart this electrical tape. To get better access to the wiring and also mount the PCM, I remove the passenger seat. Behind the passenger side kick panel trim cover are a couple things. First, these connectors, which we'll talk more about these later, but also the factory engine control computer right here. Now to disconnect the harness from the engine control computer, you use a socket and you screw it out, if that makes sense. You use the socket to remove the connector. Here's something we learned. In order to get the main harness connector through the hole in the firewall, we needed to remove this cover first. With everything disconnected, we then remove the main harness. Because the airbag sensor harness was intertwined with the main engine control harness, we had to take off all that electrical tape and separate the airbag sensors from the rest of the harness, which most of the other stuff we're just gonna throw away. We're also going to salvage the oil pressure sensor connector and the coolant temperature sensor connector and the harness, but unfortunately it runs through the injector harness so and also goes through these salt and pepper shakers. So we're gonna bypass the salt and pepper shakers and connect them directly to this connector here, which is uh, next to the master cylinder. Now for the new stuff. We fed the main holly harness back through the firewall. Here's what we have going on inside. We have the main holly harness coming through the hole in the firewall, going along the rocker panel and then under the carpet to where it connects to the Terminator ECU, which is mounted on this bracket that they include that fits under the passenger seat. We also have a MAP sensor vacuum hose right here that we'll talk about later. Here are the old factory injector connectors and some of these are broken and some broken on both sides. And then the new Holly injector connectors right here are a modern design that have a nice satisfying click when you put them on the injectors. Yeah, I love that sound. And then these are the, all the injectors are labeled so you can't mess it up. Here's the connector we're going to use for the gauges and a couple other things. It's right here next to the master cylinder. It comes out of the gauge pod and then goes through the harness and we separate it from the main harness. Here is the coolant temperature sender and then the oil pressure sender is down here. Now the tachometer and the Holly fuel injection system get their RPM signal through this wire from the coil and then it ends up over here. The tachometer also splices off this wire as well. The Holly Terminator kit comes with this adapter harness that goes from the factory TFI distributor to the main engine harness. Also, there's this white wire that we need to connect to the green wire I mentioned before that goes to the negative side of the coil. Holly includes a new manifold air temperature sensor. Now that's separate from the coolant temperature sensor right here. That one is for the gauge. This one over here is for the EFI system. Behind the kick panel trim cover, we made a few more connections. Here's the ground for the Holly main harness. Then in this connector, which is connector 216, the airbag sensors come out of it, but also this is where we tapped in for the fuel pump control. The red wire we connected 
to the green wire from the Holly main harness. And then also we needed to make a 12 volt switch connection. And this is where this wire goes to the connector next to the master cylinder for the 12 volt power when the key is on. Here's a little trick. Rather than run the green wire all the way from the Holly harness to here under the driver's seat, we just bypass the factory relay by connecting the red wire to the green wire. To make these connections a little bit easier to understand, I've created some diagrams. For the coolant temperature gauge, I took the red wire with the white stripe from connector 110 and connected it to the temperature gauge sender on the left side of the manifold. The oil pressure gauge uses a white wire with a red stripe and it goes from connector 110 down to the oil pressure sender. There's also a switched 12 volt wire that's in connector 110 as well, which is convenient. There's a splice near the connector. One wire goes to the positive side of the coil, while the other spliced wire goes toward the kick panel. And there I joined it to the Terminator X's 12 volt switched wire, which is red with a white stripe. The wire for the tachometer also comes on a connector 110. On later models, it's a green wire with a yellow stripe. On earlier models, it's a tan wire with a yellow stripe. There's a splice near the connector. One leg of the splice goes to the negative side of the coil. The other leg of the splice connects to the white wire that comes out of the Holly ignition harness. The fuel pump wiring is a little complex, so I'm gonna walk you through it. The green wire comes out of the Holly Terminator X main harness. It connects to the red wire that comes out of connector 216, which is in the kick panel. Then the red wire is a factory wire that travels from the kick panel to under the driver's seat where the fuel pump relay is. Now we bypass the factory fuel pump relay by connecting the red wire and the green wires together. The Holly Terminator X harness has its own fuel pump relay, so that's why we can bypass the factory relay. Here's where the self-tuning magic happens. Now on the left is a factory narrow band oxygen sensor and on the right is the wide band oxygen sensor for the Holly EFI. The wide band oxygen sensor helps the Holly Terminator ECU tune while you drive. We plug the wide band oxygen sensor into the left side exhaust pipe. We use an oxygen sensor plug for the right hand side which is unused. Now we had a lot more things going through that firewall grommet than the old factory harness. Uh, this big bundle of wires plus the vacuum hose and then also this airbag sensor harness as well. So we used a utility knife to open up the grommet to make more room. The last electrical connection we needed to make was the throttle position sensor. What we did is we used the connector included with the Holly harness and then chopped off the old end of the factory harness so that if we ever need to replace the throttle position sensor, we can. We routed that vacuum hose from the Terminator ECU to the back of the intake manifold. There's a vacuum tree right back here where also the fuel pressure regulator connects. And now the moment I've been waiting for to start the Holly Terminator X fuel injection system on this 1991 Fox body. Now I've got everything installed and the PCM mounted under the seat using the bracket they supplied and then I have the I have the uh, handheld coming out of the glove box. So this is no joke. I'm going to start this the first time to show uh, show you how easy this is and how hopefully foolproof it is. Let's see if I did my my jobs correctly. So first thing we do here is uh, we turn on the key, and we're going to see the Holly ECU start up. And we're going to first need to do a TPS auto reset. Sometimes it prompts you for it, uh, it prompted, for, uh, prompted me for it before when I turned on the key. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that one more time though. So the TPS auto reset, uh, make sure the ignition's on, but the engine's not started, and that is true. I slowly press the floor, the pedal to the floor and release it twice. I'm doing that okay next good to hear okay now we're gonna go to um, the wizards to set the set it up so we're gonna go to this one here it's a multi-point not a throttle body we're gonna go down here and choose the 7099 3 Mustang V8 next Oops. okay yes one three seven two six five four eight is what we have here Okay, 
cubic inches. Um, let's check that. More than 10 cubic inches. It's a 306. Okay, next. Target idle speed, we're gonna be, we're gonna try around 700 or something like that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, below 220, yeah, 235, it's a stock cam, so that's fine. Um, we're using the uh, coiled negative. Uh, let's see, make sure. No, we're using TFI. Um, so let me just there you go. Okay, 43 PSI should be the target. Injectors are OEM. Uh, they're 19 pound per hour. Power editor type, none, unfortunately. Turtle one bar sensor. So I'm using that internal bar, one bar sensor right here. It's hooked up to a vacuum hose uh, where it tees in by the fuel pressure regulator. Okay, I believe that's ready to go. It's loading into the PCM. Okay, let's do that. Let's cycle the ignition. Hopefully we'll hear the fuel pump uh, relay cycle. Yep, heard it cycle. Fuel pump's whirring away. Okay, let's give it a shot. It's alive. Well, she's running. So next I'm gonna set the timing because I did take the distributor out to get that connector on. So I'm just gonna reset the timing and uh, man, we're ready to rock and roll. Welcome to the 21st century where chips are for eating, not for tuning.